Biscuit joints. Do they add strength to a glue up or do they only serve as a good way to align boards during a glue up? It's been an ongoing debate for years and it's something that I'm really curious about. Personally, I've always thought that adding a piece of hardwood into the middle of a glue joint with all of that extra gluing surface must add some strength, surely. So today I'm going to set up an experiment and find out. As you can see, I've prepared a selection of different materials for this experiment. From left to right, this is melamine, which is basically particle board with a plastic coating. This is MDF, which is basically just compressed sawdust. This is a hardwood ply, so basically thin layers of solid hardwood laminated together with alternating grain directions to give extra strength. And finally, solid wood and solid wood. And the reason I've got two different types of solid wood here is because I thought it would be good to try an end grain to end grain glue joint and also a side grain to side grain glue joint. This wood is poplar and this is pine. And as you can see, this isn't actually solid wood. It's laminated pieces of pine with a veneer on each face. This is actually called block board, but for the purposes of this experiment, this will serve as my solid wood side grain to side grain glue joint example. The first job is to cut all of these pieces in half at the mitre saw. There are three different sizes of biscuits. This one here is a 20, this is a 10, and this is a zero. And for my experiment, I'm just going to be using size 20 biscuits. I set the biscuit jointer to cut roughly into the center of the thickness of each board, just by eye. Then I marked up the center of the width of the boards by eye and cut my slots by aligning the center of the fence on the biscuit jointer with those marks. As you can see, I've now got all of my biscuit slots cut and for each of the examples, I can now glue up one with biscuits and one without. Then I glued up each of the biscuited and unbiscuited joints using clamps. I also labeled those with and without biscuits. For some of the thinner boards, I clamped them down to a flat surface, my workbench, just to keep them flat. I've managed to use practically every clamp that I own, but they're all clamped up now and I'm going to leave them to dry for about five hours. I actually ended up leaving them to dry overnight in the end and they had about 20 hours in total. And the next day I marked up some center points on both sides of the glue joint. These would serve as reference marks to align onto the top of this block, which I could then clamp to my workbench top. I then used my bathroom scales and a squeeze clamp reconfigured as a spreader clamp to apply force to the joints. And I aligned the bar of the spreader clamp to the other center mark on the board just to keep things as fair as possible for each example. I rigged up a second camera to film the results from the bathroom scales. This would allow me to review the footage to accurately determine the peak force applied at the breaking point for each example. The first joint is melamine without a biscuit. So that joint failed partly at the glue joint and partly the board itself breaking. So I would say that's probably about a 30% glue joint fail and a 70% board fail. Next is melamine with a biscuit. This one has also failed partly at the glue joint. I'm just going to break this open. And you could just about see the tip of the biscuit there, but it's fully embedded within the rest of the board. And this is remarkably similar to the first melamine board in that the failure is probably about 30% glue joint and 70% board. Next is MDF without a biscuit. So unsurprisingly, this one has 
completely failed at the glue joint. It's a very clean split and it'll be interesting to see how the biscuited piece of MDF does. Okay, now it's MDF with a biscuit. This is another very clean glue joint break and you can see that some of the fibres of the MDF are still stuck to the biscuit itself. This one is plywood without a biscuit. Another very clean break at the glue joint which isn't surprising. Okay this is plywood with a biscuit. Oh dear. See if I can get this apart. Interestingly, the biscuit itself has split in half. This is the poplar end grain joint without a biscuit. And that's another clean glue joint fail. This is the poplar end grain with a biscuit. And once again, the biscuit itself has actually broken in half. Now on to the pine side grain joint. Wow. This one hasn't failed at the glue joint. You can see here that the glue joint is about a millimetre in and it's split the wood itself. And that goes to prove that wood glue is stronger than the wood itself. Finally, this is the pine side grain joint with a biscuit. Another early failure and this one has failed partly at the glue joint but the wood itself failed before the glue joint did. So here are the results and some of these really surprised me. Although my experiment wasn't exactly scientific so there may be some discrepancies involved. And biscuit joints aside, the most surprising thing for me was that the poplar end grain joints managed to withstand 56 kilograms of force without a biscuit. That's over twice as strong as the wood itself in the side grain glue up example. I had no idea that end grain joints could be that strong. I think the reason that the side grain joints failed so badly is because of the width of the boards. If these boards had been wider, there would have been far more strength in the wood to withstand more force. But even then, I would still expect the wood to fail before the glue did, just because modern wood glues are so strong, particularly on side grain joints. Do biscuits add strength? Well, according to my results, not at all. Five of the six joints were stronger without a biscuit than with. Are you as surprised about these results as I am? Let me know in the comments. I hope you enjoyed this experiment. I certainly did. If so, please give the video a like and subscribe to my channel for more videos. Thanks for watching.